Now, let's say you've got a child that says between three and four. They know the monsters, so they'll go s, at, p, i, n. They know the monster sounds. And if you say where's p, they'll point to it. Where's a, they'll point to it. Um, so they know those monsters. They can see those monsters. You always keep at least one strip there so that they're always in order. It just it speeds everything up for the brain. Okay, so what you found is that the child... When they're trying to follow the monster sounds, say the word. Now, if they're still learning them, obviously a lot of working memory is being used up. Just thinking, oh, what was that sound? Which is why you need these here. So what's the sound? Oh, sat, p, it, n, n, s, a. So whilst they're learning the monster sounds, if they're having to think what is the sound, that's going to take that's going to take away from working memory that we need to be freed up to blend them. So the sooner they know these monsters, the better. OK, so once they know the monsters, if they're going mm, at, but they can't blend because that's the phonemic awareness. They haven't got the phonemic awareness. Remember, phonemic awareness is the ability to isolate, segment and blend phonemes. So if they can't. We're not isolating them at the moment because they're here. So they don't have to, to think of what the sounds are in a word. They're already here. They haven't got to segment because they're already segment. They're already ordered. But they've got to blend. They've got to do one of the three sort of main elements. Phonemic awareness also is manipulation of those sounds. But those three core cool things are isolate. So you can identify the sounds in words. Segment. You know the order of the sounds. And blend. You can put those together to bit for the word. So here, this is kind of your your basic start for phonemic awareness so they've learnt the monster sounds now they're going to go mm, at and if they can't say the word nat this is what i'd like you to do so nat obviously here's nat so if it's a non-speaking child and they can't so they're not going mm, at nat because they're non-speaking verbal dyspraxia non-speaking autistic whatever the reason is or even speech delays and they're not giving the correct sounds even though they know what the sounds are that's why this is ideal, because they'll go and they'll show you. So so that's sort of takes care of that. But let's say you've got a child who is just not giving the sounds. One, of the, one good activity, which gets them ready for an activity called speedy paired uh, mapping, um, is where um, they point to the, uh, you point to the monster sound, um, and they say the sound, and then at the end of it, you're going to give the word. So you point to it, they'll say n, mm, they'll say a, ah, they'll say t, and then you say nat. So they say n, mm, they say a, ah, they say p, and you say nap. And obviously, after you found the word, so n mm, at, you say nat, then you find he's nat. And you obviously, you're, if you're thinking, well, how do I know that's nat? Uh, there is a sheet. Have I taken the sheet out? Sorry, I've cut up a lot of these to go in with a child tomorrow. There we go. Okay, so mm, at Nat, and it's got the monsters there. Because this is another activity that um, when they go mm, at Nat, because they know that, that is there. So even if they can't hear the phonemic awareness of the blending, they can't hear that the word should be Nat, as long as they know that's nat, they'll go mm, at nat, even though the middle part of them actually blending themselves isn't there. But this is what helps the brain to get there. So whilst we're doing all these activities, it's creating new pathways in the brain so that the children develop that phonemic awareness that's essential to be able to start using those graphemes. And say so for some children, they just have it. They have phonemic awareness. And so you're just you know, really sort of telling them what we're doing with it. The children who don't, which will be up to sort of a third of all children, nothing to do with intelligence or how much you read to them or talk to them, whatever else. They can't blend, they can't isolate. So if you give them the word, you know, spin, they can't give you those sounds. They can't tell you the order and they can't blend. So this part, this is really important, the blending part, we're giving them all the parts and they've just got to blend. But then once they can do that, we're going to do the, well, alongside doing that, we're also going to be working on the encoding. So this phonemic awareness mastery is purely and simply about the stuff that is needed to get to there. Some children will be able to get to there within the first day of, of doing my work. Some children are going to need a little bit longer. The children that I have that don't have this and have been trying to navigate with their teachers and whatever else the letters and things 
are really put off and struggling because it's just too much. And all they need to do is overcome that phonemic awareness deficit so that it's kind of releasing the, the, the power in the brain to be able to then also navigate not just the phonemic awareness, but with the letters, which is phonics. So at least one in four children go to school without the ability to learn phonics.